Hey guys, and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon, and today I'm giving my second thought on The Dark Knight. Now, quick spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this movie yet, for some weird reason, stop watching now, uh, go watch it, and then come back to me, because I am going to be going over the entirety of the plot, so spoilers will abound. That's your warning. Okay, on with the review. So The Dark Knight, um, obviously, is the second of the Dark Knight trilogy, directed by Christopher Nolan, starring Christian Bale, Heath Ledger as the Joker in this one, Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, Morgan Freeman, oh, Aaron Eckhart as well. So, phenomenal cast, just like the first one, phenomenal cast, just like most of Nolan's films, great actors all around. And of course, Heath Ledger is the headliner for this movie, because as good as Christian Bale is, uh, is um, Batman is not Bale's best performance, not that it's bad, but there's not much that he's asked to do for his character in this trilogy, especially this one. Um, it's more laid back and more focus is put on the Joker, as I think every Batman film with the Joker should be. Uh, the Joker has to be the focal point because the Joker is the most interesting character in the entire Batman series, the entire comic book universe, possibly the entire cinematic universe. The Joker is so fascinating. And it's been talked about on, uh, on endless lengths, but Heath Ledger's Joker is phenomenal. It's brilliantly acted, uh, terrifying uh, at any age. It's just thrilling to watch his performance. It's so wicked and so uh, twisted and just so interesting. And um, if you didn't know, fun fact, he actually directed those two scenes where the Joker has a camcorder and he's like messing with the cops and stuff. Uh, he directed those scenes himself. No one didn't even show up to one of those days. So that's cool too. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things about this movie, but it's not perfect. I think the Dark Knight trilogy is uh, no one that is sloppiest. There's still all three very entertaining movies, but he definitely is sloppier in his writing in these movies than he normally is. I don't know if that's because of Goyer's involvement. I don't know if that's because of his brother's involvement, but regardless, um, the Dark Knight trilogy all have plot holes, all have inconsistencies, all are sloppy in some way. Um, a lot of people have complained about uh, the lack of use of Two-Face in this movie. I'm neither here nor there on that. It's the same thing with Scarecrow in Batman Begins, where it's like, he's fine, but he could have been used so much more. Um, and it would have been really cool to see what else you could have done with him, because Two-Face is such a great villain, and in this, he's just a lackey, just like Scarecrow is just a lackey in Batman Begins. That's not my main issue with this movie, though. My main issue with this movie is the ending is mind-numbingly stupid, if you ask me. And it's unfortunate, because the rest of the movie, to me, is like a 10 and that ending drops it down a full point for me at least like depending on my mood it's an 8.5 or a 9. Uh, really great movie still but that ending is so stupid and let me explain why if you don't get it. Um, so essentially uh, to refresh your memory <laughs> the movie ends after uh, the Joker's already been uh, incarcerated supposedly uh, you don't see him again after he's been hung upside down Batman then goes to save Gordon and his family from Two-Face. He tackles Two-Face off of the ledge, and Two-Face falls to his death. He talks to Gordon and says, um, we can't let the public know that, you know, the white knight of Gotham City became Two-Face and killed people and all this stuff. And Gordon um, overestimates how many people he kills, by the way, if you have a kill counter on that. He's wrong. Anyway, um, and uh, Gordon says, oh, we can't let that, anyway, we can't let this get out. All those people that went to jail will be ruined. And um, Batman goes, I kill those people. And you're like, that's stupid. There is no reason to blame Batman for those deaths. Blame the Joker. Just blame the Joker. You have this madman on the loose going around killing people, blowing up hospitals, uh, trying to blow up boats, and uh, you, you know, cutting people's faces open and stuff. And you go, huh, who could we possibly blame for these cops that died? Batman, obviously. And it's like, 
you have this lunatic running around with knives and bombs, and you blame Batman. Why? Why? Just say that um, the Joker bombed uh, with his rocket launcher that he used to blow up the Batmobile. Maybe he blew up a, a armored car that Harvey Dent was in with a couple of cops. Blew that up. There you go. That solves it like that. Everybody's satisfied. Nobody questions that. Bane doesn't come along uh, five years later to tell everybody that he lied. Unless he finds out from that, and that's a stupid thing to lie about. Nobody cares about that. Um, it's just a dumb ending. And it's it's really frustrating that uh, that it was written like that. And, and luckily, uh, in the third one, they actually do address it as being a stupid idea. Um, but, what, that movie came out in 2008. I was sitting in the theater at, like, 12 and a half years old, going, why'd they do that? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And, like, I know I'm a very critical person, but if a 12-year-old can look at a movie and go, that's stupid, then you'd think three professional Hollywood writers could come up with something better. And it's just frustrating to me that the whole movie is a 10. Like, I cannot say enough good things about the rest of this movie. Everybody does that, though. So I want to focus on the one stupid part. And it is extremely stupid. There's no excuse for that. I've heard people try to defend it, and none of it makes sense. It is just blatantly stupid and bad writing. It is. So, yeah. Um, that's why this movie is not perfect for me and not his best movie for me either. If you look at my... Uh, ranking of Nolan's films, that's not my top movie for him, The Prestige is, because uh, there's just, that is so dumb to me, I can't get over it. Um, but the rest of the movie is so good that the movie is still like a nine for me. It is that good. The rest of it is so good. Like, if you can make Christian Bale's performance look boring, you know that you're acting phenomenally because Christian Bale, like I said, is always phenomenal. So if you can overshadow him, if you can be so good that you don't even want to see Christian Bale's acting. Normally it's the other way around where Christian Bale is so good that you don't care about anybody else and you just want to see Christian Bale's performance. This is the opposite where when Christian Bale's on, you're not upset, but you're just waiting for the Joker. That is phenomenal acting. And of course, uh, then Christian Bale overshadows everybody else because then there's Michael Caine who's phenomenal and Morgan Freeman and Aaron Eckhart's good. And you know, everybody in this movie's great, but Compared to Christian Bale, man, and then Christian Bale compared to Heath Ledger, this is just... <sighs> it's debatably the best villain portrayal in a movie ever. I'm not just talking about superhero movies, I'm talking all movies. It's phenomenal. So, if you guys haven't seen this movie yet for whatever reason, you should definitely check it out. Uh, it's rewatchable despite how long it is, and despite that ending, you can kind of just... Eh, glaze over the ending. It does make it a little less rewatchable for me, but, you know, I can get over it, and I think most people can too. Most people don't even talk about it, but it's a great movie. So, that's what I thought. <laughs> what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, and of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.